Well, hello there. Welcome to a new video. This is going to be part one of my end of the year pickups. Let's be focusing on October and November. That being said, I got a lot of stuff these last two months. I got one big purchase. I got a lot of games, a lot of movies, and even something new to collect. Please pray for my wallet. With that said, let's get started, shall we? First, Justice League War World, uh, one of DC's latest animated movies. But it was pretty good. I have yet to watch it. I got these last, these next, these three things like the like, last two days. Batman the Doom that came to Gotham, another DC animated movie. Um, but it was pretty good. I believe it's a an Elseworlds story, so that'll be interesting to watch. And then finally, Legion of Superheroes. Um, the DC animated films have always been uh, consistent, and people do quite enjoy them for the most part. It's the one thing that people tend to agree on in the comic book community that their that DC animated films are really above what Marvel does. Whatever whenever Marvel does anything animated, it's usually subpar is some people that people tend to, you know, agree with. So yeah. <clears throat> Next Castlevania season four. I've yet to watch any Castlevania. Yes, I'm aware it's been on Netflix forever. I know. I would watch it eventually. I just wanted to have it have them all on disc. All the seasons. I'll probably be doing the same with Castlevania Nocturne if that gets the physical, which hopefully it does. Next. <clears throat> and I've said this before, I'm not huge into anime. But when it's when it's anime that's like like based on like games, that then I, I take more of a liking to. Because it's similar of uh, stuff that I like. You know, video games, obviously. So like, you know, Castlevania. The DMC, uh, not the new one, not the new Netflix animated series, but the original anime series for the Omega High. Uh, the two Dead Space films, uh, the Mass Effect film, that stuff I can watch, no problem. Regular anime, it, it tends to, I need to, it needs to be interesting for me to give it a chance, or even to be remotely interested. So I asked my friends, who are more into it than I am, I asked them, okay. What animes do you both, you know, recommend? And one of them, my buddy Dale, sent me uh, Cowboy Bebop last Christmas, I believe, or the Christmas, Christmas, Christmas before. Yeah. It's been a while. It's also 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'm tired. But um, I asked them what they all recommended. And uh, so I found this on eBay for, I think, about... 25 27 bucks something like that brand new so i picked up Helsing ultimate the this is the complete collection the whole volumes one through ten so figured why not i shall give it a chance or i will watch it eventually hopefully it won't take me a year to watch like cowboy bebop did sorry Dale. next <clears throat> Uh, these next few I'm going to kind of rapid fire through. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Great movie. I enjoyed it. Really good. Um, it's a great. It was a great way to wrap up a trilogy, in my opinion. Very good. Next. Ant-Man and, Ant and the Wasp Quantum Mania. A lot of people are saying this is their like, worst movie of, of either all time or like the year, I don't get that sentiment. Yeah, I thought it was serviceable enough, fine, entertaining. Yes, wonky CGI, all that. Overall, it was still fine. It was still entertaining enough, in my opinion. See, I'm one of the people who, a lot of people are, you know, <laughs> seem to be a trend. Whenever something new MCU comes out, it's either, it's either hated or it's loved. And if it's hated... The next thing that comes out is loved. And that's just this vicious cycle. 
I'm like in the middle. Is it, is it entertaining? Do I get my time's worth with it? If I do, it's something great. If I don't, then yeah, great. It, it sucks. But for the most part, post end game has been fine, in my opinion. But that's my opinion. Next, Eternals. Again, a lot of people hate it. For me, not knowing anything about the characters, it was a nice introduction. So, next, <clears throat> Shang Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings, the first post in game movie. Overall, solid enough. It was I. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. I think they were hoping this would be the next Iron Man, like the next setup, the next main DC, the main DC, excuse me, the next main MCU hero. So, but overall, it was fine. And then finally, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. I think we can all agree that we could all we could all see where a potential sequel could go with Chadwick Boseman, but with him, unfortunately, an untimely passing, we got this, and while it is a nice, it is a nice tribute, you, one can't help but think what could have been, but overall, still solid, for the most part, but a very fitting tribute, nonetheless. And with that, my MCU collection is not complete, but the only thing I still need to get um, is the Marvels, but that hasn't come out yet. Um, I saw it in theaters. It was good enough. It was entertaining enough. And then, um, I do also plan on picking up, eventually, uh, Loki Season 1 and WandaVision. So, but yeah, my MCU collection is now finished, finally. The longest time, those were the movies I needed, still needed to get, and I decided to finally pull the trigger on, finally get them. So, <clears throat> Next, picked up The Great Wall on 4K. Um, when this came out, I heard, it, I heard mixed things about it, but it sounded interesting enough, and it was cheap. So, why the hell not? Next, Transformers Rise of the Beasts Steelbook. Um, I love this movie. Really, I only had one main complaint with it, and I wish... And it's that I wish we got to see the Maximals in their beat, in their robot modes more. That's my only really main complaint with it, but uh, it was I enjoyed it. I loved it. Beast Wars was my shit back in the day. So next, picked up the Equalizer on 4K. I saw this when it first came out, and I thought it was. I never even knew it was based on a TV show, but uh, it was it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It was uh, John Wick before John Wick. Well, no, it was about the same around the same time, I believe. It's I think they came out. I think correct me if I'm wrong. It's it's been a while. I think the Equalizer and John Wick came out around the same time, same year, 2014. I believe if you're wrong, I don't remember, but I still enjoyed it. Basically, what I'm saying. So. Then uh, picked up Equalizer two, and this this has got a, this has got a story. But before I get to it, and Equalizer three, so I have all three of them. Um, I've only seen the first one, so I still need to watch two and three. But getting back to Equalizer two here, oh boy, little story rant. I ordered this, and well, not this, different copy. I ordered it. A copy of this, and I ordered another movie from Walmart. Both steel books. Yeah, let's just say that after my ordeal, my ordeal, I'll never be ordering steel books from Walmart ever again. So, the other movie that I ordered was Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey. Now, I'm fully aware that's like one of the worst movies of all time, of like the last like decade according to most people. I still want to watch it. It sounds very interesting. So, Walmart had a steelbook. It looked pretty nice, actually. 
so I ordered it and this and uh, equalizer one. So, Blood and Honey shows up first, and I'm excited. And I, open, I get it open, I open the pack, I open the still book, the whole thing comes apart. Just in my hands. Nope. Just. And I was very upset and annoyed at that. So I talked to someone online, and it's like, um, yeah, my, it's damaged, like literally, it's literally in pieces. Uh, can I get a refund? Because at first I was going to get a replacement, but I didn't want to chance that the replacement shows up broken as well. So I took it back and I got my refund, got my money back for it. A few days later, Equalizer 2 and Equalizer 1 show up. Equalizer 1, fine, no issues at all, none whatsoever. Equalizer 2, however, is also damaged. Not quite as bad as Winnie the Pooh, but close. It was dented here at the top. And also, the spine, I could tell, was starting to be... It was loose. So, in my mind, I'm saying, one day, going to open it to pull out the movie to watch, and the whole thing just breaks apart my hand. That's what I saw happening down the road. So, I contacted Walmart and said, yeah. This movie also arrived damaged. Is there any way I can get a replacement? So, we went through the steps to get a replacement. I packaged this back up, the original copy back up, sent it out, uh, sent it through FedEx, and then got it back within, like, say, about three, four days. In the meantime, however, my replacement was stuck in limbo, and for a good, like, week, week and a half, Nothing had moved. It had not moved at all. It had not moved from, you know, to the same, same thing that it was being shipped, that it was out for delivery, none of that. So I contacted, contacted Walmart, you know, quite a few times during that week and a half to say, hey, what's going on? Am I still getting my replacement? You guys got my copy like three days ago. What's going on? And I was always told, well, no, you're going to get a replacement. Don't worry. Finally, it was about, it was like, I want to say, three, maybe four days before Thanksgiving, when I contacted them and contacted someone else at Walmart, and like, I was asking, look, what's going on? My thing has not moved at all. You've had this thing for like, close to a month now. What the fuck's going on? And the person's, like, you know, doing their usual PR speak. Oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. So basically, I had to cancel it and get a refund, which that also took forever to get. Good lord. So, my replacement movie from Walmart, I had to order off Amazon. And it arrived perfect. It arrived in a box with lots of cushioning, so it was not damaged whatsoever. So, yeah. No more steelbooks from Walmart. If I'm doing steelbook at Walmart, I'm Gonna order it to be picked up in store. Because Jesus Christ, that was a fucking ordeal. Never again. But next Avatar. I've watched this movie once. I thought it was okay. Didn't really get the hype for it. But again, thought it was okay. So I picked it up on 4K to give it another shot. And since I picked up the first one, I also picked up the second one. This is... I'm very, very negative on this movie. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm just... This movie took 14 fucking years to get out. What the fuck? That, I mean, I know the excuse would be, oh, the technology wasn't ready yet. The technology was fine in 2009. This took, again, came out in 20. 2022? 2023? What the fuck? Why so long? Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then finally, the last movie that I got these last two months. The Mist 4K. Love this movie. This is a great, great horror movie. Really good um, 
adaptation of The Mist from, by Stephen King. Well, I'm not, well, no, I have not read The Mist, but I just know that this is just really, it's damn good. So I wanted to pick that up. All right, <clears throat> that's it for movies. Now, remember I mentioned how I said I found a new to collect for. Yeah, I'm this. Is, I'm I'm blaming my girl. I'm blaming my fiance for this because she's rubbing off on me. I bought some books, regular books. So, yeah. like I said, pray for my wallet. Now these first. These first nine books are all uh, Star Wars books, so yeah. First, Ahsoka. Read it. It's great. Loved it. Pretty damn good. Mm. Next, uh, Star Wars, Dooku Jedi Lost. Um, haven't read it. I just I'm pretty sure it's just, it. It gives more in, more um, what's the word? insight onto Dooku. So, sounded interesting. Uh, Star Wars Master and Apprentice. I'd have read this one. Um, it's uh, I believe it takes place not long before Phantom Menace, and if I remember correctly, um, it deals with Qui Gon and Obi Wan furthering their relationship because there's a point in the point in this that Obi-Wan is, I'm pretty, pretty sure it's Obi-Wan, which would be kind of, I could be getting them flipped, but I can't remember, it's been a while, sorry, it, but um, it's either Obi-Wan or Quiet, and they're thinking of kind of, kind of leaving the other, basically, You're kind of, like Obi-Wan's thinking of either leaving Qui-Gon and going to a different master, or Qui-Gon is thinking of passing Qui-Gon, passing, Qui-Gon is thinking of passing Obi-Wan off to someone else, if I remember correctly. But um, they work together to move past the obstacle in this, and they grow closer as master and apprentice. So it was a good read. Next, <clears throat> Star Wars Tarkin. Uh, I've not read it. Um, it's obviously a book about uh, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. Lords of the Sith. I did read this one. Pretty good, pretty interesting. Um, if I remember correctly, again, it's been a while because I read this and uh, Master Print Master Apprentice two years ago. So again, it's been a while. But if I recall, from what I recall, what I recall the Darth Vader and Darth Sidious end up uh, sort of shipwrecked on this planet, and they have to work together to get home or to be rescued, whatever. And it's a very interesting book. It's a dynamic between them. So. <clears throat> Next. Uh, the Catalyst. A Rogue One novel. I believe this is... I believe this is sort of a prequel to uh, Rogue One. Basically telling the details of the Death Star project, how it gets started, all that. I believe that's what this is. I could be totally wrong though, but I don't I don't know. I haven't read it. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> Star Wars, the Harry Public uh, Convergence. A lot of people are hit and miss on the Harry Public stuff. I have not read any of it, so I have no input whatsoever. But Next. Star Wars, The High Republic, The Battle of Jeddah. Again, haven't read it. I don't know. Next. Star Wars, Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade. This is relatively new. Um, don't know much about it. I just assume it's about the rise of the Inquisitors. I assume. Back when we based off the title. And then finally, the last book I got here. I saw this one in Chicago when I was out there visiting Cindy this last this last time. 
And it sounds like, it reminds me of a series that I read and I really do love. I really did enjoy, enjoy. And it just gives off, like, those vibes. So um, I'm going to definitely be reading this uh, next year for my Goodreads challenge. And uh, that is Starbringer by uh, Tracy Wolf. Um, if you ever heard of a series called the Aurora, Aurora, the Aurora Cycle by uh, J. Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, this gives off heavy vibes. And I love that series. It's really great. I do recommend it a lot. That I had a blast reading those three. But yeah, I now am buying books physically. Again, free from my wallet, because that makes three things now. Movies, games, books. My wallet's going to hate me. Uh, now, games. Best for last. Well, I guess best for last would be your interpretation, I guess. First, mm, in an isolation on Switch, the limited run finally, finally came through. I also have two more limited run games coming soon, so look forward to that in the next next part. But yeah, in an isolation. Heard it runs pretty damn well on Switch. So look forward to uh, playing that again. Next, Atomic Heart, Russian Bioshock. I haven't played it yet. Looking forward to it. Assassin's Creed Mirage, played it, platinum a bit, loved it. Uh, really nice callback to uh, the first game. So, looking forward to. Um, I believe the next one is going to be Assassin's Creed Red, the Japan, uh, the feudal Japan setting, so I'll look forward to that. <clears throat> Next, <clears throat> The Last of Us, Part 1. Um, I only put this up because they finally announced a PS5 version of Part 2. That's what I was waiting on before I decided to pick this up. So I'm looking forward to playing through that again. I, I love The Last of Us, Part 1 and 2. And a lot of people don't like Part 2. I love Part 2. It's, it's the story... Some people, you know, the story, say what you will about it, but overall, the development, the overall character arcs of both Ellie and Abby, it, for me at least, it pulled on my, it pulled on my heartstrings and made me give a shit, so, and I already gave a shit before, so, it made me care more, at least in my, uh, my opinion, so, but yeah, looking forward to going through that again. Still need to watch, still need to finish the show. I watched the first, I got to episode three, and I just kind of fell off. Not that I hate episode three, because episode three is that episode. I just, my, my attention went elsewhere. So, need to finish watching it eventually. Next, <clears throat> Shantae, and Shantae, Risky's Revenge. And Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. So now I have all the Shantae games minus the first one. I'm waiting for that to become available at Best Buy. Then I'll pick it up. They're good. They're fun games. They're fun platformers. Not much to say on them. And then finally, <clears throat> Spider Man 2. So, which I've also played, beaten, platinum. Great game. I enjoyed it. It's not my game of the year, which I'll be which I'll be doing a video maybe tomorrow, going over my personal list of game of the year, what my picks are. So I'll look forward to that. And then uh, I got one more set of games here. But before I do, I'll show you the big purchase. I'm pretty sure it's easy to figure out what this big purchase could be. Because I did a short. But uh I picked up a Series X. So I finally have all the current consoles. So I'm happy. So with that said, of course, I had to get some games. Also, along with my Series X, I also picked up a play and charge kit for my controller. So don't worry about doing 
you're using any batteries. So that's nice. But as far as game wise, I picked up Atlas Fallen. Uh, haven't even started it yet. I just installed it. That's about it. But uh, looks very, very fun. Very interesting. So next, Dead Space. It's me. You, I mean, you knew I was gonna double dip on this because again, it's me. So I'll run through that again shortly. Immortals of Avium. Um, heard that the Xbox version was kind of not as good as the PS5 version, but um, my thing is, okay, I have a new system. I need games to play on it, and I'm talking actual Series X games, not Xbox One games. So, very give it a shot, and it was on sale too. Next, Storm, the Deluxe Edition. A lot of people do not like Scorn, um, but to me, I still want to play it because it looks very, very unique and interesting, and it reminds me a lot of Alien. Well, you, know, you cannot look at this world and tell me that it's not fucking inspired by Alien. I'm sorry. Next, Sniper Elite 5, one of the last games I needed to get before I got my Series X because of, because of that. That up, and then finally, Star Trek Resurgence, and that is it. That is all my pickups for the past two months. Like I said, a lot of stuff. Big purchase: Xbox Series X, books, movies, games. Oh my! So that said, hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the future.